Welcome to Let's Talk Ed and Zahi. We have been talking about the process of hiring new faculty. We, we've gone through uh, several things and, and now we're to the point we have our new person and we are are ready to get them going. And really, Zahi, all we need to do to get them going is have them sit through the mandatory HR onboarding and we are good to go at that point, right? And, and that's what we do very commonly. We put our foot in their uh, back and we push them in the deep end of the pool. You know, they've they've had the credit card training, the mandatory Title IX training and had sexual harassment training and driving training and we're good. That doesn't make you a teacher. With all due respect, we mean it's like goodness grief what's going on here. We don't do it in K-12, right? The student teach, they take classes, particularly about pedagogy and and how to work with individuals. They're overseen for a whole year by a by a, by somebody who's a mentor who's been in it. But yet we don't do it in uh, in many of our colleges. Um, and and I don't know. I mean, you've you've worked in a you know you've had a prior life and prior iteration before before colleges did. Uh, you know, did stepping in a college uh, lead you to all of a sudden become the teacher of the year and knowing everything about about teaching? No, no. So, you know, my prior life, I, I was in broadcasting and uh, I, I spent a lot of time as a broadcaster in college. But uh, I had the opportunity to do an internship at a TV station in Washington, D.C., and it was months before they gave me the opportunity to record a demo tape, uh, where, which is basically uh, a little mini newscast on its own, uh, something that you would send out as a part of your hiring packet. Uh, so, you know, and, and there was mentoring to get me there. Uh, when I took my first professional job in broadcasting, uh, it was a few days before I went on the air in a meaningful capacity, uh, other than just basic introductions here and there, uh, because, again, it, there was a lot of talk about, you know, this is how we do things here. This is our expectations of how we do things here. And, you know, in higher ed, that is a conversation that may or may not happen. It, it depends a lot on the institution. It depends a lot on on the leadership at that institution and, and what's important to them. Um, but in some cases, you know, they are just getting that very basic, you know, here's how your vacation works. Here's insurance. Uh, here's your mandatory Title IX and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and off you go. And, you know, where I, I think particularly that could be difficult is if you are somebody that is a career and technical instructor that, you know, maybe did not spend a lot of time in college, like somebody that has gone on to to get an advanced degree of some sort. And, you know, now you are expected to know how to run a classroom, how to engage students and and how to do all those things that that we want our really good instructors to do. So, you know, one of the things that I think would be really, really important is if we're going to stick to just the basic higher ed stuff, um, you know, can we pair our new hires maybe with a mentor uh, to help them, you know, have somebody that they can turn to to help them along the way? Well, I agree with you conceptually on the latter uh, question that you asked, uh, many times I, I have a fear, which is that the blind is leading the other blind. Uh, so, you know, being being in, a, in the walls of a place that calls itself a new university for four, six, eight, ten years, however long, doesn't a teacher make you, right? You being a learner doesn't a teacher make you. And we do very little typically in terms of training the individuals while we train them for the research for the hypothesis testing for the journaling for the uh for the writing of manuscripts and, and publications we don't do a good enough job to train them for the teaching part of higher education 
and and maybe maybe those are strong words. Maybe people would disagree with me. But if I push you in your back and into a TAing job, that doesn't make you a teacher. Begin ag- because again, very often the blind are leading the blind. So uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with individuals that don't know. Uh, what the curriculum is and how to build it, what the syllabus entails, what it should entail, uh, what are learning outcomes, what's the difference between an outcome and, a, and an objective, you know, assessment, what does it mean? A grade is not a learning outcome uh, assessment. Uh, and, and how to grade, you know, let's, uh, we, can, we can go on and on and on forever. Those are things that have not just an art that you acquire, but also a science behind them. It, and I believe that this is critical to the success of our colleagues that we hire. It is critical to the success of our students and our institutions. So onboarding, 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 and professional development. So yes, they need a mentor absolutely to bounce ideas off of, but also what are we doing for the onboarding? Onboarding isn't just a you know, a one day HR thing, what are you doing for the first year? What are you doing for the next five years? And how are you continuing to develop yourself as an administrator, but also your teachers? What are your thoughts? Are you rebelling against that? Not, not one bit. And, you know, I, I, I think to some of our own, own things here. And like when I first started, my onboarding was a tour of the school and then here's your office. And it's like, now what? Uh, so, you know, definitely that. And some of it too is as simple as starting to talk about, you know, what do some of these different things mean? Um, higher ed is almost as bad as the military about acronyms and, oh, yes. you know, there's just sort of this expectation that when I start throwing out terms like FTE, that you just know those and you understand what that means and why that might be important. And, and certainly for an instructor, FTE might not be something that, that is truly important, but, you know, just knowing when we start talking about all of these different acronyms, what the heck they mean and, and how do they apply to me? Uh, but also, you know, really the, there has to be a lot of that, you know, let's let's talk about how you build an effective lesson plan. Uh, how do you manage your classroom? Um, you know, how do you deal with a you know a difficult student, for example? All of those things, and and I get that some of that may be extremely situational, um, but there there is a, a greater sense that you can deal with in a case like that, and so. I, I think all of that spending time on that is really important. And one of the things that we're often cursed with in higher ed is we don't necessarily have a lot of time to do this. Uh, sometimes, you know, our, our instructors are starting just days before the semester begins. And, you know, they truly do get that sink or swim. And, and there you definitely need somebody that you know, might be able to help them along the way and help them be prepared. Yes, to the to that uh, point that you just brought up, Chris, I, I agree wholeheartedly that we bring them in. And imagine those are the full time people. What a great proportion of faculty across the nation, the instructional staff in in many a college, whether it is a university or or a college, public or private are your adjunct, your part-time individuals, many of whom are, are, you know, they're doing the tour of colleges just to make ends meet. But we've never invested in them, right? So uh, why? Because, oh, there's cost. Well, let's, let's be blunt about it here. Uh, well, surprise, we're always blunt. But, uh, you know, if our job is the growth of our learners, the growth of our community and the economic development of our region, that's where the investments should go in. It's the investment in in the people that work to make that happen. And the overwhelming majority of the job, Chris, is not in our offices. The overwhelming majority of the job that does that is in the classroom. So 
we need to do more of that. And this is this is sounding yet again like a rant. Uh, but no, we're I mean, part of what you and I are doing here in this show is to try to revolutionize higher education by telling people to wake up to the realities and onboarding your faculty and a continued professional development that is well thought out, that is associated with their uh, evaluations and the evaluations we talked about it uh, several months ago. It's not a gotcha moment. It is how we can help you grow to reach those lofty goals. Yeah. And, you know, we're about out of time, but, you know, I, I do want to, my out the door rant is the, the importance of that professional development that you just hit on is, you know, that is a continuing thing. We always want to be growing. We always want to be expanding our own horizons because we should be passing that on to our biggest constituents and that is our students. So if you enjoy topics like this, be sure and uh, join us and subscribe to us here on Let's Talk Ed. Ring that bell down below. You'll get notified when we post new content. And of course, if you uh, enjoy this show, be sure and like it and, and maybe even throw in a comment down below. That helps us get in front of other like-minded individuals. And you can find Let's Talk Ed on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.